Uh, the gentleman yields. I now recognize the uh, chairman of our terrorism, counterterrorism task force subcommittee, uh, uh, the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Fluger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for uh, having this hearing. And I think that's a great point. We, we have been hit over the last four years. We, we, we have seen gaps in our security. We have been vulnerable. So, uh, and I think you holding this hearing today is an acknowledgement uh, of a new direction that we are going. And we're going to make sure, damn sure, uh, that we're protected. Uh, so I thank our, our witnesses and our panelists. Um, and want to start by saying I represent uh, Angela State University. I've mentioned this in this uh, hearing room many times. Um, and Dr. Rusimano, I'll start with you. What lessons, and, and Angela State is a center of academic ex excellence in cyber defense. Um, what lessons should Angelo State be learning and what programs should they be um, trying to seek uh, to help with the shortage of cyber professionals that we have, especially those that come from places like rural Texas uh, that want to be a part of our security and defense? And, and give us some of the, the, the lessons you've learned and, and those that I can share with an institution like that. You know, I think the key is expanding the portfolio of training with respect to cybersecurity readiness. Once again, many folks think of just computer science, engineering as those pathways, but there's others. And with respect to the national security threats that have been voiced, um, I know with Gen Z students, they wanna make a difference, right? They are looking for meaningful work. It's that wasn't necessarily the motivation of an 18-year-old in my generation, but Gen Z wants to make a difference. So a call to this national security threat is uh, something that Gen Z could rise to. And I will point out the uh, ISC2 study from last year pointed out that our cybersecurity growth is flat year over year last year. So as the threat is increasing, our workforce growth is flat. We have to broaden the academic programs, the training programs available to our students and articulate the urgency and the opportunity for Gen Z to make it a difference in this challenge our nation faces. Are, are those training programs adequately suited to, to address the threat, to meet the threat, or is it Volt Typhoon and some of these things that we've seen recently? I mean, are they, are they outpacing what we're learning or, or is it adequate right now? We need more investment in applying the state of the art to our cybersecurity threats. And I think the Cyber Pivot Act is addressing, broadening that workforce focused on applying the state of the art. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jones, I'll go to you and, and uh, have two questions for you. Um, number one, talk about internships and kind of pick up where uh, Dr. Rusmano left off. Um, what do those internships look like? What's most beneficial? How do we take uh, a center, center of excellence, a student that comes from rural West Texas and put that uh, individual into a, a proper internship? Yeah, Congressman, thank you. Um, so um, lot, opportunity, obviously, for someone to come in and learn. Uh, about cybersecurity, about the techniques that we have in place, but also to learn about an electric co-op. You know, that we're, you know, for a, a, a place like you're describing, a good place to work with a virtuous mission. So um, there's a good exchange there, and we hope to raise the profile of what electric co-ops do in internships pro internship programs like that. Well, that's where I was going with the second part of the question is, how, um, how worried are our cooperatives, which a service communities like mine in many, many cases, how worried are we that that piece of critical infrastructure is vulnerable to an attack that would shut down the, the, the lights? Well, uh, Congressman, I would relate it this way if I may. So um, co electric co-op managers, we have a universal and always have had a universal item that keeps us up at night, and that's the safety of our team members. And we, we have a dangerous profession, but we have a, an accompanying worry that keeps us up at night now, and it's certainly cybersecurity. So this weighs heavy. I can assure you, on every electric co-op manager across this country. So we're taking it seriously. We're working together. We're collaborating. We appreciate this opportunity to collaborate with the federal government. We want to be the best partner we can be. But uh, yes, it is top of mind for all of us. Um, thank you. We've got uh, 45 seconds left. I'll leave the time to the uh, additional or the other two witnesses. Uh, what keeps you up at night? Uh, how will the Pivot Act uh, help um, with, with uh, those threats? You've got about 20 seconds each. Yeah, I, I think I'd write, like to emphasize again the, this idea of broadening our scope of cybersecurity training and the roles and so on, where today I think we typically focus on training people that just have cybersecurity in their job role or in their job title, 
where I think it's a broader focus than that. We need to make sure that people coming out of business schools understand cyber threats. We need to understand that people coming out of law school understand uh, risk mitigation and so on. From a physical cybersecurity perspective, we don't just train people that have security in their job title. And I think we need to take the same approach here and really broaden our view of who needs that cybersecurity knowledge. My time uh, is expired. I'm sorry. If you'd like to enter something for the record, please do so. I yield back. The gentleman yields. 